Hello, this is Pastor Sam Velez, and I'm so glad that you're joining us for our service. We hope you enjoy this message today, that it blesses your life and your families. We love you. God has given us the ability and the power to overcome. The power to overcome. It, it, God wouldn't be God if he called you to do something It did not give you the power to do it. Whenever God places something in your life, and whatever God gives you a, an idea, or he gave you that idea for the business, or he's putting something in your spirit to start, whatever God has called you to do, he will empower you to do it. But you have to live with the expectation that because God told me, I expect for it to succeed. I expect for it to happen. I expect for God to do these things. Because if God says it in his word, and the Bible says that God is not a liar, then I should expect the answer. Amen? So God has given us the power to overcome, and God calls us to do different things. God, the, some of you, you have amazing businesses because God started an idea, whether it was you or someone else, and he's empowered you to now use that business to bring him glory. He's empowered you to. The job that you have, God placed that desire so deep inside of you that that's why you're doing it. It's not because you woke up one day after playing Call of Duty and said, I want to be in the army. And it looks really cool when I play video games with my friends. No, there was, there was something on the inside of you that drew you to that. And God will empower you to do it. God empowers us, and he also gives us the power to overcome. Because here's the thing. Even though God calls us to do things, and it is our responsibility to obey, there are moments that problems come in the middle of our obedience. Has that ever happened to you? Where God asks you to do something, and you obey him, and then a problem comes? And you're like, really, God? Like, I'm doing what you told me, and now I'm dealing with this. Whether God's like, hey, I need you to start this business, and all of a sudden, like, your AC goes out, and you need to buy a brand new AC unit for your house, and all the money you saved, now it's, you're going to have to waste it on an AC unit when you wanted to start that business. Or God convicted you and said, hey, you need to love your kids more. Be patient with them. And then they come, and they scratch your car. They, they took it in the middle of the night, and they crashed it. And they hit a parked car. You know, whatever. And you're like, God, you told me. I'm trying to love them. It happens many times. And what I'm about to read to you, the disciples are going through the same thing. God gives them a commandment. But in the middle of their commandment, they're dealt with issues. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to go. We're going to be in a famous passage today. But I want to bring some truths out of it. If you, if you go to Mark chapter 4. We're going to be in verses 35 through 41. Mark 4, 35 through 41. It says this. It says, as evening came, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they took Jesus in the boat and started out, leaving the crowns behind, although other boats followed. But soon a fierce storm came up. High waves were breaking into the boat. And it began to fill with water. Jesus was sleeping at the back of the boat with his head on a cushion. The disciples woke up shouting, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to drown? When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and said to the waves, Silence, be still. Suddenly the wind stopped and there was a great calm. Then he asked them, Why are you afraid? Do you still have no faith? The disciples were absolutely terrified. Who is this man, they asked each other. Even the winds and the waves obey him. Church, this morning, I, I need you to understand something. Although we cannot control the storms that we face, we can control the way we respond. We can control that. There are things that come into your life that come unexpectedly. You didn't plan for it. You didn't foresee it. It wasn't in your, in, your, in, in your mind at all, but it happened. 
And although you can't control those things, you can control how you respond. You can't control that part. Because many times what happens is when something doesn't go my way and it goes, and it, it goes south, whatever the reason is, and it doesn't go the way I planned it, a lot of times instead of responding the way God has asked us, asked us to respond, we react to it. Reacting and responding are very different things. Responding is, okay, let me take a pause. Let me ask the Lord. Let me, let me think this through, and then I'll make a decision. Reacting is what we are all very good at. We'll just go set off. Whether it's tell off somebody, whether it's just start making irrational decisions, and then before you know it, by the time we feel calm, yes, we are calm, but we don't realize we just set up a forest fire with everything else. We feel good because we let the steam out, but we reacted. We didn't respond. And the disciples heard the Lord. The Bible says that Jesus tells the disciples, hey, I need, we're going to cross the lake to the other side. And the Bible says that the disciples, it doesn't say the disciples, they, they delayed, they hung out for a little bit, they went to Daco Palenque, and then they came back and they left. The Bible says that they got up to the boats and they set off. So the disciples weren't even living in disobedience. But the Bible says that as long as, as they were going, the storm comes. And I want to talk about three things that we can learn from this story. Number one is, this, is that obedience has blessings and battles. Obedience has blessings and battles. The disciples obeyed the Lord but had a storm. God, I, we did what you wanted, and now we're dealing with a storm. And we sometimes feel the same way. God, I've, I'm doing what you want. I read your word. I've done the devos. And now I'm dealing with this problem. But Jesus also says in the Gospels the same thing. That problems were going to come, but to take heart that he has overcome the world. In other words, even though you are serving God, we still live in a sinful world. We still have to deal with bad people, bad situations. We still have to go over hurdles. But it doesn't mean that what you did was not good enough. Doesn't mean that God doesn't care. They are just battles that we have to overcome. The Bible says if you read it again, if we could read it again, look something real quick. I want to show you something. In verse uh, 36. So, Jesus, so they took Jesus in the boat and started out leaving the crowds behind, although other boats followed. Although other boats followed. In other words, the day was perfect for a sale. It was perfect for a sale. That means that everybody was in agreement, let's go set out to sale. But when they start out, they're hit with the situation. Can I tell you something? That battles that come in your way has nothing to do with you, but the purpose that God has placed inside of you. When you are faced with battles, it is the devil that has come to oppose what God is trying to do on the inside of you. That's what we need to understand. That the devil comes to oppose people. The devil comes to prevent people from living out the purpose that God has placed in their life. And if he can get you distracted, discouraged, he will get you to stop doing what God has called you to do. He can get you to stop serving him. 
he can get you to think that God's against you. In other words, many times the battles we are facing have nothing to do with anybody else. It is the devil coming to oppose, oppose you and prevent the purpose of God. This storm was an attack of the enemy. You want to know why? The Bible says that Jesus rebukes the storm, right? And the Bible says he rebukes it. He says, be still. And then everything was calm. That same word rebuke, when Jesus, in the Greek, is called epitamao, which means rebuke, right? But it's this rebuke that he is rebuking demonic activity. The same word that he, uses to re, that he uses to rebuke the storm is the same word he uses in Mark chapter 1 and Mark chapter 3 to rebuke demons out of people. In other words, many battles that you're facing is because the enemy wants to prevent you from going forward with God. Because he knows that if they get too connected with God, I'll lose my grip on their life. I'll lose my grip. And so the Bible says that the enemy comes. The Bible, the Bible Jesus said it in John 10 that the, 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 the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy, but I've come. They might have life and life in abundance. The enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The enemy comes to disrupt. I'm not saying that every situation, it's, oh, it's the devil. The devil's attacking me, Pastor Sam. For all, for all of you Rosemary Baby fans or exorcists, I'm not. I'm not saying that, okay? Oh, Pastor Sam, then, then deliver my husband. He, he needs a deliverance. I'm not saying that your husband is a devil. But what I am saying, because here's the thing. Sometimes, it's true. Sometimes the battles that we do face, it has nothing to do with the devil. It's our decisions. We put ourselves in that problem. I decided, I, nobody put a gun in my head. I decided to make the decision, and now I'm living with the consequence. But, so I, but because I don't want to feel bad, I'll say, oh, the devil's attacking me. And I'm not saying that either. You have to be aware. Sometimes they're your decisions that put you in that place. And other times, it's the attack of the enemy that's trying to prevent the purposes of God to take you where he wants to take you. Before we get to the storm, you have to understand something. In, in chapter 3, of the, chapter 4 is in a sandwich. Chapter 3 and chapter 5. Chapter 3, God, Jesus picks his 12 disciples and he is empowering them to go and to tell others about the kingdom of God. And he's giving them the power to overcome demonic oppressions and all these things. Chapter 5, we're going to find, if you keep reading, they go across, they get to that place, and Jesus right away deals with a demonic problem. And so chapter 3, what happens? Jesus is empowering the disciples to advance the kingdom of God. Hey, in other words, hey, I'm picking you 12 because I want you to go and tell people about me. I want you to go and pray for the sick. I want you to go and cast out demons. I want you to go and tell people about me. To, to, to the Jews, to the Gentiles, I want you to go do that. Chapter 5, they cross, and they cross into Gentile territory, and they're met with the problem, the same problem. So the problem we have right now that we're looking at in this story is the devil is trying to prevent the kingdom of God from advancing. And for your life, if you are not careful, the devil will try to prevent God work, working in your life for whatever purposes lie on the other side of your decision. On the other side of your obedience. If you said, hey God, in 2024... I'm going to decide to do this, and I'm, I'm going to obey you. 2023 was great, God, but I want to obey you fully. And you get hit with something. It is your job to say, God, I trust you enough to understand that this is an attack from the enemy. But I also understand that although it's an attack of the enemy, you've given me the power to overcome. 
every single person in this room, God has given you the power to overcome. You don't have to wait for a Sunday to overcome what God's dealing with you on a Monday. You don't have to wait for a Tuesday night prayer. God has given you the ability to overcome whatever has come your way. Whatever battle has, whatever storm has been placed in front of you. Remember, the devil will use whatever he can to prevent you from moving forward in him. If he can get you discouraged to the point where you're like, you know what? I'm done with God. I don't need God. It, it's been great, you know, or uh, I, don't, I don't have to do this. I don't have to fully, you know, you start trying to justify why you don't have, you know, if he can get you in that place, he has you. <coughs> if he can get you to compromise, he has you. He has you right where he wants you. But if you can stick it through, see the disciples, although God had called them in chapter three, and they and chapter three or chapter four, Jesus is preaching on a boat. Many people, I mean, Jesus is doing great things, although they're empowered, they're afraid. They're dealing with a situation that they weren't expecting. They're afraid. And what do they do? They wake up Jesus and they're like, hey, Jesus, this storm, you know, the, the, the storm's happening. And then the big thing that really, really, it sounds nice in the Bible, but Jesus was actually very mad that they did this. They were like, don't you care that we're about to drown? They were getting mad at Jesus. Like, don't you care? that we're in the situation. And I feel like sometimes we're like that with God. God, don't you care? Don't you care that, that I'm dealing with this situation with my child? Don't you care, God, that we had these plans and all of a sudden they fell through and now I'm suffering with these issues? God, don't you care? And we begin to question the faithfulness of God. We begin to question, God, can you really do what you say you're going to do? Or are we just wasting our time? I think we've all been there at one point or another where we thought, God, do you not care? Don't you care? It takes faith, church. To believe God for more. It really does. It takes faith to trust God at his word. Because in the moment, you don't see it. In the moment, you don't feel it. In the moment, it's not like this. Like you, you know, this, I don't know. This Disney plus show feeling. It's none of that. In the moment, it's scary or it's frustrating or... It's kind of like it's thrown you off. You're confused with what's happening and you don't know what to do. Those are real emotions. But this story shows us exactly how God is. Even when they get mad at God and say, man, don't you care about what's happening? What does Jesus do? He gets up, he rebukes the wind. And calms the storm. Why? Because Jesus has the power to overcome, and He also gives me and you the power to overcome. Jesus has that power to help us overcome whatever it is that we're dealing with. Whatever attack it may be, maybe right now you feel like, Pastor Sam, this is for me. I am dealing with personal storms that I didn't know were going to come. Whether it's through your marriage or 
personal things that you've, maybe you don't even tell people. It's just you, you, you hold it on the inside of you. But Jesus has come to give you the power to overcome. Church, there is nothing that is too hard for our God. There's not a sickness that's too hard for our God. There's not a lack of money that's too hard for our God. Whatever it is that you feel is the hardest thing, there is nothing too hard for our God. Amen? So if Jesus is the power that we need to overcome, how do we do it? How do we overcome? That's how we overcome. We do it by resisting the devil. By resisting the devil. When we are faced with a battle, with a storm, we do it by resisting the devil. By resisting the devil. James chapter 4 verse 7 says this. So humble yourselves before God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You know what that means? To resist the devil and he will flee from you? It means to be under God's authority and he will flee from you. To be under God's authority. Not to be under my own authority or whatever I think or I know what's best because it's my life. You know what's best. Yes, it is your life. But God created you and he knows you more than you know yourself. So if I'm going to resist the devil, then I'm going to fall under his authority. And when I follow under his authority, I'm saying, God, I'm following your lead. And I'm following what you say. You say go right, I go right. You say go left, I go left. You say go back, go back. But I'm, fa- I'm under your authority. And when I spend more time under the authority of God, I spend less time with the devil. I spend less time wasting time battling things that I don't have to battle. Because I spent my time, I've humbled myself before the Lord. It says, humble yourself before God. In other words, your pride can't go with you. If you got a lot of pride on the inside of you, it is time that today that you surrender that to God. Say, God, I, I'm going to give this to you. I am very prideful. I'm, st- I'm as stubborn as a mule, like they say. But if you can humble yourself and resist the devil, go under God's authority, the Bible says that he will flee from you. We respond by, man, I got to resist. I got to resist the devil. I got to come under God's authority. Whatever the word of God tells me, I got to come under it. I got to humble myself and realize that I don't know everything. I don't know everything. I need God. I need him to lead me. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, he leads us to green pastures. In the book of Psalms, it says he leads us to still waters. So it doesn't matter where God leads you, he's never going to lead you into chaos. To burnout, to anxiety. That is not God's character. God does not send you to any of those things. He leads you to peace. Amen. You got to resist the devil, and you got to do what Jesus did. Sometimes you got to build your faith and speak to your storm. Build your faith and speak to your storm. You got to rebuke the very thing that's coming against you. Your storm can come in many different names. Your storm can come in the name of addiction. And you, God has given you the power to rebuke it. The Bible says that they wake up Jesus, he gets up, 
and he rebukes the wind and the waves. The Bible doesn't say that Jesus gets up and he looks at the disciples and he says, hey, um, well, we're in a storm. Um, this is your time to learn how to deal with storms and use your boat and, you know, we're going to learn how to ride this out together. He quickly gets up and he rebukes it from them. What happens with many people is they, 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 they cope with the problem. They let it linger. They camp out in valleys. And they're like, man, we're just going to use this time to, to teach me Teach you what? Teach you to be in a storm for the rest of your life? Or does it teach me that because I have Christ in me, I can rebuke what's coming against me? And it has to stop in Jesus' name. David said, though I walk through the the shadow of the valley of death, I shall fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Can I tell you something? David doesn't stay in the valley. He gets out of it, and God was with him. Do you learn things? Of course you do. There are battles that I have overcome, and I learned something about it. But it's not because I decided to camp out there and write a book about living in the valley. No, it was me dealing with what I was dealing with and believing God at his word and fighting against the very thing that's coming against me. Church, I refuse in 2024 to let you come every Sunday defeated by the enemy. I refuse it. I'm putting my faith out there for you. I really believe that this is God's going to expand your territory. I really believe in whether it's your business, your household, your job, whether it's a promotion, whether it's in your school for students that are in this room 412 or or young adults in the room that are in college. I really believe that God wants to expand your territory. I really do believe it. But although I believe it, I can't live it for you. I don't live inside of you, but Jesus does. Jesus rebukes the storm, and then he gets after them. Like I said, it sounds kind of calm, like Jesus was like, do you not have little faith? But he was actually telling them off. That was more of a sarcastic. He's like, you have little faith. He's correcting them. He's telling them, dude, I am, in chapter 3, I empowered you to go. In the storm, I've been with you the whole time, and you're still getting mad at me? He says, you have little faith. He's getting mad at them. You want to know why he's getting mad at them also? Because he already, ha- he already had commanded them to go to the other side of the lake. If Jesus commands you to do something, it's because he's going to see you through. That it's going to happen. It doesn't matter what storm comes. You're going to get to the other side of what you obeyed God for. You're going to make it. You're going to see the goodness of God. But it requires you to trust in God's power. If you can trust in God's power, like fully trust in the power of God, if you can trust in God's power, that whatever God has led you to do, even in 2024, maybe you have a list of things that you want to do. You've put a, I don't know if you, anybody here does vision boards or things like that, or you just wrote a list of things that you, you kind of want to see different this year as a family or as an individual. But whatever it is that the Lord has put in that list, believe that you will see it through. Believe because God said it, I'll receive it. Because God said it, I will see it with my very eyes. As we end this series on on expectation, next Sunday we'll start a brand new series, but really felt led to talk about this because I'd rather us deal with this now in January of 2024 so that 
even if you're in this room and you're not really dealing with a battle, you'll be ready when the battle does come. You'll be like, oh, yeah. Huh, Satan, you're funny. I already, I already know this. I know how this game plays. But there's some of you in this room. There are storms in your life that have prevented you from being joyful, being peaceful. Maybe you've felt anxiety. You get anxiety attacks. You can't sleep. You've been depressed. That's not God's desire for your life. That isn't his. He never des designed you to live that way. He designed you to live in victory. He designed you to live triumphant. He designed you to live with joy. Thank you so much for joining our service and for listening to us. We are located at 4519 East Del Mar Boulevard in Laredo, Texas. And we hope that you continue to be a part of our ICM family.